All right, guys. Today, we got something really special. So, to replace the old 3.3 engine that blew up, putting in a Dynamite 19. So, if you guys are curious how the exhaust works, I know there is a lot of confusion behind it. Um, so, it comes with these little brackets and a spring. You just wrap it around and hook it. And, I mean, I don't think it's going to leak personally, but um, we're going to have to find out once I break it in a little bit. But, got the carb on there, got the flywheel. It's all was really easy to put together. The hardest part was probably just wrapping this spring around. Um, but, yeah, it's... This thing is awesome. I can't wait to get it all broken in and get it running. All right, guys. I got it all in. The easy start barely fits. I got it all basically ready to start up. Um, the exhaust, I did have to move this a little bit, move it a little bit out, that little pin, so then I can zip tie this. They also zip tie your air filter, so I got it zip tied. I can still slide it on and off. But it all fits. It is tight, but it does all fit. And uh, I'm going to warm the engine up to uh, like a running temp. Then I'll try and turn her over and start her up. Uh, I also did take off the head, added some after run oil and also in the carb you can see a little bit in there to lubricate it just a little bit more because the first startup is the hardest on the engine so you want to make sure it's extremely lubed up you i mean if you have too much of course you're gonna starve the engine and drown it but you don't want to have you're better off having more than not enough because it can easily damage an engine so just put some oil, uh, I'd recommend after run oil, and uh, then you can get it ready to start her up. And of course, heat this up. Um, I know a lot of people recommend to get about 200 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe a little bit warmer. I'm gonna try, um, I'm gonna try and just get it as hot as I can and see where it goes, but. Uh, let me start her up and get the first tank, and I'll get to you, back to you guys after that. All right, guys, so I got it breaking in. This is its first tank. It's almost out. A uh, couple minor issues. The exhaust is leaking, like the header part. Uh, it's not like leaking air, but since it's breaking in, the oil is kind of sitting there, and it's finding its way out. And I need a do some work on the fuel lines it it does have a couple air pockets and it's causing it to kind of turn off sometimes so I'm gonna work on that but other than that it's breaking in pretty well it's it's idling really well uh, of course we have it fairly rich so it can break in of course the first tank is always the most dangerous because it's everything's still seeding in uh, keep in mind you need to make sure when you are when you are through your first tank make sure that you have the cylinder on the bottom of the stroke I put a I marked out a little bit on the with the sharpie on the flywheel to know what's the bottom and uh, do that otherwise it can seize up because it cools and the metal contracts and expands when it cools and heats up so keep that in mind all right guys so i'm on my second tank here and the fuel was really having a hard time getting in here and me and my dad narrowed it down to the exhaust leak so you can see there that o-ring's pretty squished in there and what we did it's hard to tell, but there's a little rubber piece 
right behind that o-ring you can kind of see it there and the o-ring's not right next to it then we also wrapped it in this really strong uh thread tape this stuff is meant for like steam and so it's really high temp and that really sealed it up i did a quick test and it was flowing way 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 better it would flow and i didn't even have to uh choke it so it's getting really good exhaust flow now started right up when i didn't even want it to start and uh so i'm gonna wait for tomorrow it's cold out right now so i'm gonna wait till tomorrow run in the last two idle tanks then i will start in the quarter throttle, half throttle, three quarters, and full throttle. I'm using the Adam Drake method to break in this engine. But other than that, it's actually doing very, very well. A lot easier to tune than the 3.3 that I noticed. So, and this thing does have way better throttle response and tons more power. Even if I just give it a little bit more, a little bit of throttle to just change the idle you want the idle to not just stay in one place you want it to fluctuate a little bit otherwise it's not gonna break in as well so and when i was doing that i noticed a lot more power but stay tuned and we can i'll get this all broken in and we can get see this puppy rip <laughs> Right, guys so the clip that you just saw was a couple months ago um, I made a couple changes with this I changed the easy start a little bit um, to make it a little bit more efficient and uh, when I was breaking it in originally this uh, this was a, I had a different exhaust it was the original 3.3 exhaust and um, come to find out it was leaking really bad I know that a lot of people uh, have that same issue. So got a uh, OS uh, 21 exhaust header and it mounts up good. Um, one issue I did have, I think I had the exhaust too close to this pipe and actually bent in. You can still kind of see the dent. And um, so I had to try and get that all fixed. I, it's all good now it's not um dented as bad so i finally got it all working and it's all in one piece um i'm about three quarts into the break-in i guess uh it's basically broken but um a lot of people say you have to go through a gallon or two to make it fully break broken in because the cylinder still hasn't seated with the sleeve so um, sorry for not recording um, a little bit more. I'm just I'm still learning, so I didn't feel like recording it. And uh, there was a lot of trial and error, and it wasn't really worth you guys to w watch a, ha a hack job of an editing job because uh, I had to change a lot of different things and was learning while I was going. So, um, but it's all good now. It it all runs. Um, it definitely has more power. It it definitely um, if if you can get this motor and the exhaust, the exhaust can sometimes be out of stock. I had to wait for a while for mine, but um, it is definitely a good engine swap. It'll make it your uh, it'll definitely last probably way longer because I mean these uh, dynamite engines are definitely built better than the Traxxas 3.3s, but um, I'm just using some of Morgan 10% uh, uh, oil, 20% uh, nitro fuel mix, and uh, it seems to be doing pretty good. The first quart, I used some Traxxas uh, nitro fuel. It was just a 20% blend, but um, 
since that's got a really high oil content, I just figured to break it in with that for the first um, quart. So I'm about three quarts in now. And uh, let's go see this baby rip. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, sorry it's taken so long since my uh, original video of this thing. And um, it, it was just been a big mess with trying to get this thing to work. But uh, it finally runs good. It is an official ripper now. Um, but uh, thank you guys for watching this. And I hope you guys learned something. I tried to uh, put in all my struggles and uh, all the things I've had to deal with to help you guys um, with your nitro and to learn about it. So, um, yeah, so it this was a pretty fun thing to mess with. I enjoy it. Um, if you guys were more curious about the easy start, because the easy start is uh, now a remote start off of the transmitter. So the way it works, this so this negative is just grounded to the chassis. Then uh, this positive is actually tied in with. Let me see here. Is tied in with uh, the motor, the ESC uh, positive right there and so they're all tied in together right here you can see so they're all tied in so then this wire also goes to uh here the positive of the easy start and um the glow plug is also grounded here and that's where the ground is for the motor as well. Then we just take the glow plug wire and it goes all the way through here and it goes to here. So then this reduces the three cell that's in here into like 1.5 volts, which is what the, the glow plugs normally take. So then, and that's it. Then we just used this um this ESC wire and connected that into like um one of my channels to, for that would work on my Dumbo um RC remote so uh I'm so I was just using a Dumbo RC so I just uh plugged in this channel to one of the channels on the receiver that's the button that I can just turn it on and off and since this is a ESC that takes a motor. It's also connected to the easy start motor. And since the the glow plug is also routed with that, so they both turn on at the exact same time. But we have this one routed through a voltage reducer. So it's actually not that complicated once you uh, learn about it. But so that's that's basically how it's um, set up. Make sure you have a really good ground because the ground can really mess up things. I had issues with the ground. Um, but yeah, so that's that's how it's set up. And this is just a power switch that is then also just powers the receiver that then controls all the servos too. So, I mean, it's a really cool setup and it's nice instead of having that wand. But uh Again, thank you guys for watching. If you have any more questions, please just throw it down in the comments. I'd be more than happy to answer. And uh, thank you guys again, and have a good rest of your day. Peace.